for coming. Um, today, I'm going to present to you Chopin's 24 Preludes. The 24 Preludes covers all the major and minor keys of the scale. A prelude, um, it dates back to the Baroque period. The Baroque period is during 1500s to 1600s, early, and um, it serves as an introduction to succeeding movements of a larger work or a much more complex work. For example, J.S. Bach's Preludes and Fugues. The prelude serves as an introduction to the fugue, which is more difficult and complex. Who among you here have played any of Bach's work? Raise your hands. Very good. So <laughs> did you play, did you start with Bach's work with minuets first? Yes. Minuets are difficult because they have two lines upon each other. The fugue has three lines on top of each other, four or five. So your brain has to weave them all together, the notes. So um, in opera, the prelude serves as an introduction to act one. Act one in the opera is when the characters are all introduced. The antagonist the protagonist. So the reason for this is that the orchestra plays the prelude alone so that those who are late for the concert or for the opera will not miss the storyline, <laughs> right? And then later in the romantic period, Chopin made the prelude as a standalone piece. Like what I'm gonna perform to you now, the preludes. Chopin was born in Warsaw, Poland. Anybody of you? have been in Poland? How was it? Did you go to Chopin's... Um, no, I no? But I, I went to Warsaw and Krakow, very different. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, Warsaw was where Chopin was born. And um, he was considered a child prodigy in piano. He was also a composer. But his dad and his teachers told him that you are better off as a concert pianist than a composer. At the age of 21, he moved and migrated to France, Paris, France. So as we all know, um, France is a big city and it's a cultural hub. So during the period, Vienna, Paris, and London, and I think mostly those, those big cities are the arts hub. Um, he gained citizenship in France later, it changed. Uh, at the age of 28, he traveled to an island in Spain <coughs> called Mallorca. This Mallorca island, uh, well, it's a beautiful, like it's like Ibiza. <laughs> it's like the Ibiza back then. <laughs> there was no Ibiza then. Uh, okay. It was just a beach. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, he traveled with his partner, George Sand. Who knows George Sand? What is she? She's a novelist. Yes, it's a she, George. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. So George Sand is the lady in your picture. She's the lady seated beside Chopin. They were in a relationship for quite a long time. They traveled with her children to Mallorca. They were the most popular couple in Paris, in the arts world. Okay, so who was she? She, her real name is Amantine Lucille Aurore Dupin. She was married to a baron. She had two children with him. She left the baron, took her children with her, lived on her own, changed her name to a male name, George, and the rest is history. She is one of the most um, highly, highly, what you call that? Huh? Highly regarded. Highly regarded um, writer today. Um, the use of a male pseudonym is pretty common during that period because uh, the attitudes towards the women's intellectual capacity were regressive. So um, when they reached Mallorca, Chopin did not have a piano. His piano was stuck in the customs at the port, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> you have to pay a lot of money there to get it out. So he settled 
with a small piano called a pianino. <laughs> and uh, first, they lived in a normal housing in Mallorca. But when the locals found out he had tuberculosis, that is quite uh, gr grave. Uh, back then, grave. Um, they told them to move to a much more secluded area. They found themselves living at a monastery in Valdemosa. In your notes, the painting of a monastery above a hill is Valdemosa Monastery where Chopin lived. Today, that is a tourist destination for Chopin lovers. There are piano concerts held there. So you can go and visit Mallorca and also visit Valdemosa. They were enchanted by the landscape and the fact that they were living in a monastery inspired their romantic fantasy. Chopin wrote to his friend about his stay when he first arrived. I shall certainly go live in an enchanting monastery in the most beautiful country in the world. Sea, mountains, palm trees, a cemetery, a church dating back to the Crusades, the ruins of a mosque, thousand-year-old olive trees. Now, dear friend, I am enjoying life a little more. I am very close to the most beautiful things in the world, and I am a better man, Chopin wrote. The downside was that the cold and wet climate in Valdemosa was harmful to his illness. The backward attitude of the Mallorcan society, the fact that they were living in a sacred place, a monastery, without being married, and neither do they attend mass, and rumors about George Sand smoking cigarettes in public mm -hmm. and wearing trousers. Back then, trousers, you need to have a license to wear trousers for women. Uh, everything led to the locals despising the pair. They lived in an isolated existence. Chopin composed all the 24 preludes. It's quite good, <laughs> effective. Uh, ballad number two, scherzo number three, he started that. A polonaise, a Polish folk dance, and a mazurka, another Polish folk dance. The 24 preludes was published immediately after four months in Mallorca, and it was published in Paris. It was a collection of pieces written in all of the 24 keys, grouped according to the normal order of the scales. Each major key is followed by its relative minor key. Prior to submitting the preludes, Chopin, he would say, is a perfectionist. In this letter to his friend, he wrote, I am sending you the preludes. I think there are no mistakes. You are to give one to the editor, Probst, and the manufacturer, oh sorry, and the manus manuscript to Playel. Do you know who Playel is? Ring a bell? Ding, ding, ding. No? <laughs> no? Okay, I'll give you a clue. Yamaha. Kawai. Rick Mueller. Steinway. It's a piano maker. So Playel Pianos is his favorite make of piano during then. Um, uh, so, and he is also his good friend. Before going to Mallorca, Chopin borrowed quite a lot of money from Playel to fund his four-month winter stay in Mallorca with his girlfriend. <laughs> um, uh, in payback, he said, I'll give you the original manuscripts of the 24 preludes. And now that is worth a lot, that the museums can only have it. Um, Ten years later, Chopin died of tuberculosis at the age of 39, very young. At his, in his will, he wrote, my body shall be buried in Paris, France, but my heart will be buried in Poland. Um, he was considered a leading exponent of musical romanticism. What is romanticism? Romantic. When you're romantic, you savor every sound, look, taste, moment. Romanticism was a mindset. 
Most of us know that it is, it is a movement, romantic movement, romantic era, romantic period. It is a mindset. During that period, the poets, writers, dancers, choreographers, musicians, orchestra musicians, composers, they were all united by their determination to use their art to convey emotions or provoke an emotional response from the audience. Each prelude in the 24 preludes has its own miniature world and its juxtaposition when played as a whole set like how I'm gonna play today creates a succession of conflicting moods. I'll start playing the piano now. 